the start of this new government. Now to our panel this morning, Parliamentary Secretary to the Treasurer, Steve Chobo, joins me, as well as Labor MP, Kelvin Thompson. Good morning to you both, Steve Chobo. Good now, morning. Tony Abbott wants to this beyond uh, just the asylum seeker issue or transactional issues as they've been described in the past. Sure. But um, to get there, will he have to make some compromise on this, this other thorny issue, which, uh, which remains a concern to the Indonesians? Well, look, we welcome uh, this visit. It's the first visit by uh, Australia's new Prime Minister, uh, the first overseas visit to uh, one of our most important trading partners and, of course, a very near and important strategic partner in terms of this part of the world. Uh, and this visit really, in many respects, Kieran, although there's a lot of media focus on what's happening with uh, asylum seekers, the reality is that this visit is about broadening and deepening the relationship between Australia and Indonesia. And I've got absolutely no doubt that we'll see very positive outcomes from this because uh, Australia is under new management. We're open for business. We are indicating that very forcefully and strongly today with the Indonesians to show that we want to engage on a whole range of different fronts and I believe the asylum seeker will as uh, the Prime Minister has already outlined only be but one small part of it and what's more I've no doubt with our policies in time it will be an ever decreasing part of, uh, of the relationship. Do you think he'll have to compromise, soften the rhetoric a bit when he's sitting there with President Yudhiyono later today in Jakarta? To, to get them across well, the line because clearly I, from the, the Indonesian foreign minister in the last week sure. and in the weeks preceding he's pretty clear on the fact that they don't like significant components of your uh, border protection policy? Well, look, we, we understand there are domestic political considerations in Indonesia that are playing out through some of this. Uh, we understand, of course, and appreciate where Indonesia is coming from. By the same token, I know that Indonesia understands uh, some of Australia's concerns, the, folk that we, uh, the fact that we repeatedly see Indonesian flag vessels uh, impinging on Australia's sovereignty. Uh, and the reality is that there is a will, and no doubt goodwill on both sides, uh, that will see this relegated to being a fairly small part of the relationship uh, and when recognised against the aggregate which is of course the whole relationship between our two nations I really don't think that this is going to be that big a problem. Kelvin Thompson the point that Steve uh, Chobo made there about Indonesian flagged boats and Indonesian crewed boats impinging on Australian sovereignty is a, a similar point to what we saw from Alexander Downer over recent days he'll be joining me incidentally at nine o'clock this morning the former foreign minister to discuss this visit but Mr Downer makes the same point that they're Indonesian flagged vessels crewed vessels why can't Australia simply turn them back to, to where they came from? Uh, Kieran, that this morning in Melbourne there's a, a big wind, but in Jakarta there's a whirlwind as the Liberal government reaps what it has sown in relation to boat people. Uh, during the Howard years they abandoned bipartisan policy concerning asylum seekers for political advantage, and in continuing to seek political advantage on this issue, they have come up with policies which are highly offensive to the Indonesian government and brought about a situation where what should be only a minor irritant in the relationship has rapidly become a festering sore. Yeah, but uh, the, the, the fact is, Kelvin Thompson, as, as Alexander Downer put it, that other countries around Indonesia do turn boats back when, when, they, when they arrive, or, or, you know, that, that's their policy, like Singapore, uh, uh, which would not accept a boat um, of asylum seekers from Indonesia if it's an Indonesian flagged boat. So why can't Australia adopt the same approach? That's the bottom line here, isn't it? The bottom line is that we should have a regional solution, a regional outcome which involves cooperation with Indonesia, with Malaysia, with others of our regional partners uh, in order to seek political advantage in opposition. Uh, the opposition was prepared to let the genie out of the bottle concerning this issue. As the events of the past week have shown, it is very difficult for them to get the genie back in the bottle. What we need is a regional approach involving cooperation with neighbouring countries. That is what the previous government worked on throughout its period in office and that continues to be the way forward. You just don't live Let's in the real world. Break. Steve, just quickly, very quickly, I've got to go well, to a break. I mean, your La well, Labor doesn't live in the real world on this. I mean, they're still talking about policies that failed that brought 50,000 people here and saying, oh, the solution is still just over the hill. I mean, you know, they, this tired rhetoric from Labor it needs to be abandoned. They need to come up with a fresh approach. You've engaged in break. breathtaking hypocrisy in relation to this. Let's take a break. We'll be right back this morning on AM Agenda. Stay with us.
My motto has always been, do it yourself. Like car insurance. Real insurance lets me build my own car policy by only selecting and paying for the covers I need. And even lower my premium further by adjusting my excess. What a perfect way to save. Build your own policy with real insurance and get what you really need at a price you really like. Call us on 13 19 48 or go online today. To you, this one is an art, this one, Eric. As you came in to my view, <laughs> hold on for one more year, then maybe these skies will start to clear. We can build our love on middle ground. The Royal Australian Mint is proud to release the 2013 AFL Premiership Winner's Coin, a limited edition crafted from one ounce of pure silver. History shows this valuable collector's piece is destined to appreciate in value. Pre-order now from only $149.95 and the first 1,000 orders receive a limited edition Australia Post prestige cover envelope. Or upgrade to the stunning collection sets including replica player's medallion, cast Premiership Cup and official team photo. Don't miss out. Pre-order yours today. Engineered to endure with a lifetime guarantee. Torman's Endure. On our last trip, Mum's tummy was turning into a balloon. Dad stopped at the hospital and they fixed her. They also gave her a baby to make her feel better. I don't know why, it just made lots of noise and took up space. Yeah, good thing babies turn into little brothers. Now me and my little brother hang out all the time. Kluger. It's a family thing. The same hotel. The same pool. But two prices. Why pay more? Do the Travago check. On Travago, you always find the perfect deal for 600,000 hotels and over 100 different websites. Just select your ideal hotel and Travago shows you where to book at the best price. Hotel Travago. This is Amy Jenner. Thanks for your company this Monday morning. And with me, Labor MP Kelvin Thompson and Liberal Parliamentary Secretary to the Treasurer, Steve Chobo. Uh, Steve Chobo, I want to ask you about this travel expenses issue. Senator sure. Brandis, the Attorney General, paid back $1,700 yesterday, which had been claimed for flights, accommodation and rental cars. He says it was within the, uh, the, 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 the rules. While it might be within the letter of the law, is it within the spirit, Steve Chobo? Well, look, I mean, the former Prime Minister Julia Gillard flew to Byron Bay to attend uh, the wedding of her press secretary, uh, and she did so on the, on the government VIP jet, uh, and the new member for Rankin, Jim Chalmers, uh, the two of them got married. So, you know, I scratch my head about Labor Party people that go out too strongly on this, especially when I see one of the lead characters as Tony Burke. Uh, this is a man who's repaid thousands of dollars uh, back to the Australian government for incla uh, incorrectly claimed entitlements. So, uh, you know, I think what's, what's important here and what needs to happen to give tax taxpayer certainty, Kieran, is for there to be greater clarity around this. Now, the, the, the entitlement is that uh, you can make a claim if it's for official business. Now, whether official business includes private events or not is obviously what part of the conversation's about. Now, I understand Labor's desperate to get a headline, and so Labor's out there uh, with this holier-than-thou approach, but as I said, you had a former Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, fly to a wedding uh, on the government-funded VIP aircraft. It's the new member for Rankin's wedding, Jim Chambers, uh, and then you've also got Tony Burke out there prosecuting the case has repaid thousands of dollars. So uh, I think what we need is more clarity rather than political point scoring from Labor, frankly. Kelvin Thompson, uh, the, the, uh, the individuals that Steve referred to there aren't the only ones who've repaid uh, expenses. This is something which has been a common, a common occurrence on both sides over recent years. 
Uh, well, I'm not familiar with the particular cases that Steve just outlined, and obviously you can have a situation where people uh, do a number of things when they are uh, travelling from one part of the country to the other. Uh, but if the only thing that you're doing is to attend a wedding, that does seem to me to be problematic. I I've never met a bride and groom who've uh, invited guests to their wedding on the basis that they wanted to discuss work uh, with them. If you're going to someone's wedding it's because you're their friend and uh, in my view you should pay for it yourself. Uh, I think that uh, George Brandis has uh, uh, d damaged his credibility in relation to this and really that the government should be looking for someone else now to uh, deal with ministerial code of conduct matters. But if, if this is something which others have done like you know the example cited by Steve Chobo is it not double standards from Labor to, to demand that of the, uh, the Attorney-General? Well, I, I made the point, Kieran, that uh, the issue in many cases will be uh, what was the full nature of the trip, what other business is being transacted. As I said on the, on the face of it, it seems to me that uh, if you're going to a wedding, you're going there because you're someone's friend, essentially a private transaction, uh, which you should be paying for yourself. All right, let, what do you think of that, Steve Chobo, as a principal? As I, I get back to that first point, while it might be within the letter of the law, uh, is it sure. in the spirit? And do, do uh, front benches need to be, need to be a bit more cautious on, the, on this spend? Look, I think that everybody needs to be cautious when it comes to the use of taxpayers' money. Uh, the reality is this is taxpayers' money that we're talking about, and so everybody needs to exercise good judgment. Uh, the reality is that I don't think there's effectively anybody in Parliament that comes to this with perfectly clean hands. And what I mean by that, Kieran, is that the reality is that the rules around entitlements uh, with respect to travel and all those are so grey and so convoluted. There are so many uh, different interpretations around the actual act itself that's applied by bureaucrats within the Department of Finance, that it often becomes very difficult. And that's why there are literally tens and tens of members of Parliament that have had to repay because they thought they were doing the right thing, but then it was subsequently judged that no, that wasn't, and so they would repay the money. Labor's done it, Liberals done it, Greens have done it, Nationals have done it, Independents have done it. Um, and it's not about there being sort of poor morals among us. It's actually just about the rules being so convoluted, it's often hard to know whether you're within or outside of them. Yeah, let's move on. I want to talk about the paid parental leave uh, scheme that Tony Abbott's going to seek to legislate sure, apparently yep. before July next year. Why, the, why the, the rush in terms of legislating this when it's not going to start <laughs> for another year? Uh, look, there's no rush here, Karen. This is about us being a government with a number of key priorities and we just want to get stuck into the business of uh, repairing the damage that Labor left behind. So when it comes to the PPL, look, this was you know, a, a pretty big issue throughout the campaign. It was discussed almost daily. Uh, the reality is that we are ready and roaring to go. Uh, so we're going to be putting in place legislation that adopts our framework. We want to put that through the Parliament. Uh, and we want to have it ready because we are ready to govern. What we don't want are political games when we have a clear mandate uh, to go ahead and do this to bring us in line with the rest of the world. Will Tony Abbott be willing to negotiate with the Greens? They, they support the idea in principle but want the cap on money paid to, uh, to, to new mothers at $100,000 per annum, not $150,000. Would, uh, sure. would your yep. leader be willing to negotiate on those elements, do you think? I think the answer to your question really depends upon what the Labor Party does. Uh, the reality is that, that if Labor buries its head on the sand, if Labor tries to engage in political point scoring, if Labor is satisfied to see Australian women continue to only be paid at minimum wage and to have no super, as opposed to the coalition which wants to provide Australian women with a replacement wage and with superannuation, well then we might have to look at the Greens. But ultimately it comes back to whether Labor is in touch with what the broad uh, majority of Australians want and only time will tell. Kelvin Thompson, I guess this comes back to the broader argument about does Tony Abbott have a mandate for all of his, uh, his policy agenda or not? And as Steve Chobo pointed out, this has been something he has said is a signature policy of his. So it's, it's hardly a peripheral issue or policy. Uh, as I've pointed out uh, previously, Kieran, we all get elected to the Parliament on the basis of the undertakings that we make to our own electorates and the policies we put to our own electorates. Uh, and I made very clear 
prior to the election that I was opposed to the uh, six months paid parental leave scheme that I thought it was extravagant. I think it's quite remarkable uh, that the government proposes to increase company tax to pay for it. If it was a Labor government proposing to increase Actually, company tax... we're cutting tax, company Steve, tax, Calvin. We're Steve, cutting company Steve, tax. Steve Chobo and others would be out there straight away saying how outrageous this was and how ordinary Australians would be made to pay for it through super, supermarkets increasing their prices, uh, the impact on self-funded retirees who aren't able to engage in uh, frank credits, the impact on uh, this ordinary is completely Australians wrong. Of, of, this, of this policy change. You would be the first people out there condemning such a policy. It's remarkable that on the one hand you tell us that we're experiencing a budget emergency and we've got to put an end to the age of entitlement and the culture of entitlement. On the, on the other hand you come up with such an extravagant policy as this one. There's, there are some, some uh, reports around Steve Chobo that the government will consider looking at further privatisations of uh, remaining government business enterprises, Australia Post, Air Services, Australia, uh, Medibank Private among them. What's your view on this? Do you think it's likely? Well, the only uh, privatisation that we took to the election uh, was the privatisation of Medibank Private. Uh, there's no other plans to do any further privatisation beyond that. Uh, and the reality is, Kieran, that, you know, look, Australia does face some serious economic challenges. And I just heard Calvin's rant there uh, filled with misinformation, including, uh, you know, the absurd statement uh, that under the coalition there'll be no more franking credits. I mean, that is completely wrong. But the challenge that we've got is this. Labor left office, uh, well, Labor inherited office with a $20 billion surplus and left office with a $30 billion deficit. Labor inherited $50 billion in net savings uh, and left office with net debt approaching $200 billion. So we've got some serious financial challenges to start to repair all that damage, to start to pay down Labor's debt, uh, but we're not going to do it necessarily through the sale of assets. Kelvin Thompson, uh, less than a minute to go, but your thoughts on the prospect of the Commission of Audit recommending a, a further consolidation of government business enterprises like those that I mentioned a bit earlier, Australia Post among them? Uh, Tony Abbott said under his government there would be no surprises and Malcolm Turnbull wrote to the Communication Workers Union saying that Australia Post would not be privatised, so the expectation of Australians right across the nation is that there will not be privatisations and there will not be asset sales. Kelvin Thompson, Steve Chobo, gents, have a good week. Thanks. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Thanks. A quick break on AIM Agenda when we return the former Foreign Minister Alexander Downer.